Now that you know about the basic modes and parameters for mechanical ventilation, and you have your patient Sarah intubated on volume control, let's get into resistance and compliance so that you can start troubleshooting the vent. In the last video, we talked about how when we deliver a breath to a patient, how much that breath distends the alveoli is dictated by the pressure volume relationship. In reality, the pressure that we deliver with a breath gets used up in two places. Some is lost in the bronchi and ventilator tubing, and what remains distends the alveoli. How much pressure is used up in the ventilator tubing and bronchi is determined by resistance, and how much the alveoli are distended by a certain pressure is determined by compliance. So let's start with resistance. This might seem a little bit abstract, but if you get the hang of this now, it will make troubleshooting the vent much easier. Your patient Sarah will thank you for taking the time to learn this. The equation that we use for resistance comes from the basic physics equation Ohm's law. The analogous equation when talking about mechanical ventilation is change in pressure equals flow times resistance. Our change in pressure is similar to a change in voltage, and flow is similar to current. When we measure the resistance in mechanically ventilated patients, we set the flow to 60 liter per minute so that it equals 1 liter per second. This simplifies the equation to change in pressure equals resistance. In mechanically ventilated patients, the pressure we use to calculate the resistance are the peak inspiratory pressure minus the plateau pressure. The peak pressure is the highest pressure that the respiratory system sees. The plateau pressure is what was not lost to resistance and is left over at the end of inspiration when flow is zero. So how do we find out what the peak and plateau pressures are? So take a look at the vent screen here for your patient who is in volume control. We can see that the peak pressure here, to calculate the plateau pressure, we do an inspiratory hold. Watch the pressure tracings as we do this. We move the cursor to the flat portion of the curve to measure the plateau pressure. So let's take a look back at our diagram, equation, and pressure tracing to make sense of all of this. The peak pressure is the highest amount of pressure seen in the respiratory system, and the plateau pressure is what is left over at the end of inspiration to distend the alveoli. So the difference between these two is what is lost to resistance. Taking a look at the equation in the diagram here, can you think of some things that might cause an increase in resistance? Feel free to pause the video to think for a minute. Stay tuned at the end of the video to find out. We typically like resistance to be less than 10 centimeters of water. Let's take a look at Sarah right now. Her peak pressure is 24 and her plateau pressure is 18, so her resistance is 6, which is great. We just said that the plateau pressure distends the alveoli, but what determines how much they distend? It's determined by compliance. The compliance is an intrinsic property of the patient's lungs and chest wall, and it can be thought of as how stiff or stretchy the lungs and chest wall are. Our pressure volume curve here reminds us of the relationship between pressure and volume, which is dictated by compliance. The equation for compliance is change in volume over change in pressure. In looking at the equation, you can see that if only a small amount of pressure is given, but there is a large change in volume, then the compliance is high and the lungs are stretchy because it only takes a small amount of pressure to inflate them. Conversely, if a large amount of pressure is given and there's only a small change in volume, then the compliance is low and the lungs are stiff. Another way to look at this is back on our pressure volume curve. If you have high compliance, the slope of the curve is larger, and if you have low compliance, the slope of the curve is smaller. When we're talking about compliance in a mechanically ventilated patient, the change in volume is the tidal volume, and the change in pressure is plateau pressure minus the PEEP. PEEP is one of our set variables, so we don't have to calculate that. Sarah is also in volume control mode, so her tidal volume is set as well. We just saw how we calculate the plateau pressure by doing an inspiratory hold, so we know that as well. Again, the reason we use plateau pressure to calculate compliance is because this is the pressure that actually goes towards distending the alveoli. Normal compliance is around 100 milliliters per centimeter of water. Remember your patient Sarah was intubated for altered mental status, so what do you think her compliance would be? Can you think of some conditions that would cause you to have low compliance? Feel free to pause the video to think for a minute, and stay tuned until the end of the video for some answers. To summarize, the gas pressure that the vent delivers goes to two places. One, it gets used up as resistance as it goes through the endotracheal tube and the bronchi. And two, what's left goes to distend the alveoli. And how much the alveoli are distended depends on compliance. So if you deliver a low or normal tidal volume to a patient and get alarms for high peak pressures, it could be a problem with low compliance or high resistance. Checking a plateau pressure will help you calculate resistance and compliance to see where the problem is. Take a look at our pressure volume curve again. If we have decreased compliance, we'll get high plateau pressures even if we're delivering a small volume. Remember, we asked you to think about what might cause low compliance. Here are a few things that can cause decreased compliance, and there are many others as well. 
If compliance is normal, then it means we have high resistance in either the ventilating, ventilator tubing, the bronchi, or both. We asked you to think about what can cause high resistance as well. Here are a few examples, and there are other causes too. If you're in pressure support mode and are delivering a normal inspiratory pressure but get low tidal volumes, then you follow the same thought process. As a reminder, normal compliance is around 100 milliliters per centimeter of water, and we like resistance to be less than 10 centimeters of water. Now that you know about resistance and compliance, your ability to set the vent has some grounding, and you can troubleshoot high pressures or low tidal volumes on the vent. Next, let's talk about troubleshooting for patients who are hypoxemic or hypercarbic. See you in the next video.